Glory to God. Greetings to you, my gifted family in Christ. Wherever you are in the kingdom of God today, I thank you for joining me and for your continued support. Let's talk about spiritual giftings. I got this word several months ago. I put a video out and I thought that we'd be going on and on about it, but no such, no additional info came, no word or revelation came, no instruction to really keep going on that. And sometimes it was almost like a promise and I understand that the Lord has been working with the body on humility and identity, wanting us to be firm in our identity in Christ Jesus and also to be walking humbly because these are two necessities that you need when you walk in the giftings of the Spirit. So let's get into it. The gifts of the spirit are often called power gifts because they are the visible manifestations of supernatural power, strength, knowledge, and ability that can only come from God. Humans simply don't have the capability to operate in these gifts unless the Holy Spirit gives them and fuels them. The Holy Spirit is the one working through you when you use any of these gifts. 1 Corinthians 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now this is the will of the Father, that we wouldn't be ignorant to our gifts because they're going to bring many to faith and it's for the glory of God. Matthew Henry, before I get into the scripture, continue the scripture, I want to share this awesome piece of a commentary by Matthew Henry, which I truly believe is going to give many of you perspective, whether of your former suffering or current suffering, truly with great with the more gifted you are, the more you will endure in this life. And so agreed Matthew Henry. The greater the gifts are, the more the possessor is exposed to temptations. And the larger is the measure of grace needed to keep him humble and spiritual. And he will meet with more painful experiences and humbling dispensations. We have little cause to glory in any gifts bestowed on us, or to despise those who have them not. So this tells us that not everyone receives spiritual giftings. And it also tells us that for those who do, you're going to be tested way more. You're going to be exposed to temptation way more, which makes perfect sense. You know, I always appreciate Matthew Henry because he, you know, he, he, the mind of Christ is evident, evident through his, his word always. And he says, the more that you're going to meet with painful experiences, a.k.a. suffering and humbling dispensations, these are time frames which humble you. You know, as we are weak, then he is strong. So this makes perfect sense, though, for us who have suffered greatly. At least, at the very least, I hope it just gives you some perspective and understanding as to why you've had to suffer. And this being a timely word, because again, I wanted to speak on this um, long ago. But I believe that the Lord has introduced you even a little bit to some of your spiritual giftings. And if not, he's going to be bringing you into these giftings because it's time. It's time in the body. It's time, you know, once you're firm in your identity and have been humbled, it's time to go out and feed his sheep. Continuing with verse 2, ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away into dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So it's always the Holy Spirit giving these gifts. And it's important, like, for those of you who will or are having the gift of prophecy, you know, you'll be able to see false prophets and you'll understand that the very feeling of taking it personal, just like Elijah did and just like our father does, he takes it personal when people use his name. He takes it personal when his sheep are intentionally led astray by false prophets. First John 4 tests the spirits. I just am going to skip down to verse 5, which is going to give us a distinction between um, those working in the spirit of truth and those working in the spirit of error. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I apologize if I'm speeding through. No joke, I've made this video like four other times, and in this it was Distraction City all day, and the last time I made it, all of a sudden, my phone storage was full, so I'm deleting stuff. Next thing you know, the video cannot be open. It says this audio file cannot be supported, so I had to do it again. 
and I nearly had to repent for the quickness to anger that I experienced. Help me, Jesus. In verse 5, and there are dif differences of administrations, but the same Lord, and there are dif diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all, KJV. <laughs> But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So it's about the greater good. It's for the people. I always see that we're like facilitators. We who operate in gifts of the Spirit, we're like facilitators. We are vessels. It's not about us. Power comes from up and goes out to the people. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work that one in the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So the Holy Spirit gives to whom he wants, when he wants, however many gifts he wants, if any, etc. This is all about God's sovereign will. The first gift, there are nine, is it nine? I think it's nine. Wisdom. The gift of wisdom is the supernaturally ability, is the supernatural ability to judge and discern things in light of God's word and his commandments. It is the first and highest of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and it leads to an intimate understanding of God and his will. The gift of wisdom enables the believer to apply the knowledge and understanding that comes from the other gifts in a practical and effective way, and to find solutions and to troubles or dilemmas. The fact that this gift is described as the word of wisdom indicates that it is one of the speaking gifts. The speaking gifts would be wisdom, knowledge, and prophecy. This gift describes someone who can understand and speak forth biblical truth in such a way as to skillfully apply it to life situations with all discernment. The gift of knowledge. The Bible speaks of the gift of knowledge or the word of knowledge. This gift allows the believer to supernaturally know something about a situation or a person. It is not to be used to take advantage of the circumstances of others, nor is it for public display. It is the ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ to discover, accumulate, analyze, and clarify information and ideas which are pertinent to the well-being of the body. Now remember, this is for the glory of God. I'm going to give an example of when the Lord gave a word of knowledge to Ananias, and it's always for the glory of God. A lot of people say, like, what wicked people are doing behind our backs and call it prophecy. It is not, because the Bible says that it's shameful to even mention what the wicked do in private. That's it then. There's no discussion. It is shameful to even mention what the wicked people do behind your back. Holy Spirit's never saying, guess what they're doing behind your back? Never. That's not Holy Spirit. And it, in fact, if you really think about it, I mean, it's demonic, you know. Holy Spirit gives words of light, like this example here. When the Lord told Ananias the specific location of Saul, Acts 9, 11 through 16, the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he's praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. So the Lord told him where Saul was, the name of Saul, what he was doing, and he told him what he was waiting for. That's how serious the gift of knowledge is. The word of knowledge, again, also a speaking gifts, gift that involves understanding truth with an insight that only comes from revelation. Those with this gift understand the deep things of God and the mysteries of his word. The gift of faith. The gift of faith enables one to trust God and act on his promises. The Bible mentions the gift of faith in 1 Corinthians 12, 9, as well as Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. This gift enables the believer to believe God for the impossible in a situation or a need. It is a supernatural manifestation that occurs as a result of a faith-inspired proclamation. It is different from the fruit of the Spirit, which is also called faith. The gift of faith is based upon God's truth and grace, and it does not depend on fear, worry, or circumstances. So you might say, well, all of us do that. All of us um, trust God to act on his promises. The majority of believers, there's faith, and then there's those with the gift of faith. We all need to have faith in order to be saved at all. When you have the gift of faith, this is that mustard seed faith that can move mountains. 
because it truly believes in the impossible. It doesn't hope, it knows. It trusts God with such a deep knowing that it knows that God can do all. And, well, let's continue. The Blue Letter Bible says, while all believers possess some amount of faith, there is a gift of faith, which is a special ability to trust God beyond the limits of what we think is normally possible. What does the word say? With faith, all things. Without faith, no things. With God, all things. Without God, no things. You know, and we are, our faith is what, you know, we must believe in order to, to, we must believe in order to do this whole walk, you know. So those with the gift of faith truly things that are impossible, not so much with the gift of faith. Indeed, Paul spoke symbolically of the ability of faith to move mountains. The gift of healing. The spiritual gift of healing is a supernatural manifestation of the Spirit of God that miraculously brings healing and deliverance from disease and or infirmity. It is the power of God that destroys the work of sin or the devil in the human body, such as the healings that Jesus and the disciples performed. Do you hear that? We think of healing and we think, you know, infirmity. Um, it's just, it's our human understanding doesn't apply to these gifts. The gift of healing brings deliverance from disease or infirmity by destroying the work of sin and or the devil in the human body. Gift of healing. Pretty, pretty insane stuff. When someone has the gift of healing, that person heals others out of a desire to bring God the glory he deserves. The spiritual gift of healing does not manifest because of the need of the patient, nor does it flow from the person healing. The power for healing comes from God alone, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. So again, the power comes from above, flows through the healer, the one with the healing gifts, and out to the person. And here, you know, it's very true. It does... So it's not about the person being sick. It's always about faith. Miracles, all of these giftings are always about faith, bringing people to faith. Because this game is always souls for Jesus. The Lord is way more content with us uh, being saved than, you know, better is a sick man who is saved than a healthy man who is not. You understand? The gift of miracles. The spiritual gift of miracles is a gift imparted to individuals by the power of the Holy Spirit that gives an acute awareness of God's work in the world, allowing a person to be aware of God's presence in a circumstance, event, or location, and to illustrate that to believers within the body. Wow. Those who have the gift of miracles have the ability by the Holy Spirit to do powerful and miraculous things such as raising the dead or restoring the blind to sight, speech to the mute, hearing to the deaf, and the use of limbs to the lame. The gift of miracles initiates, restores, and strengthens faith in God. The spiritual gift of miracles is called in the NIV the gift of miraculous powers. This gift is different from the gift of healing which is listed separately because those with the gift of miracles have the ability by the spirit to do miraculous things of a different, more powerful kind. Casting out demons, striking blind, like with Elemis and Acts, raising the dead. Paul speaks of his showing the marks of a true apostle, which includes signs, miracles, and wonders. The gift of prophecy. The Greek word translated prophesying or prophesy and both passages properly means to speak forth or declare the divine will, to interpret the purposes of God, or to make known in any way the truth of God, which is designed to influence people. Many people misunderstand the gift of prophecy to be the ability to predict the future. While knowing something about the future may sometimes be an aspect of the gift of prophecy, it is primarily a gift of proclamation or foretelling rather than prediction or foretelling. The Holy Spirit gives the gift of prophecy to individuals to assist in edifying the church and to make God's heart known. The word prophecy comes from the Greek word prophetia, which means one has the ability to receive divinely inspired messages from the Lord. Someone with a special gift of prophecy can be defined as a poet or a person gifted at explaining God's divine truth. In other words, they are gifted in sharing God's bold truth. These messages take form in divine inspiration, exhortation, correction, or other revelations that equip the church body, as well as future events. 
This gift is still relevant in the church today and should be embraced as all the other spiritual gifts. The gift of prophecy is a special ability to speak forth the messages of God. A prophet is basically a spokesman for God. He or she delivers the word of God to people by means of direct revelation. Prophetic utterances can deal with certain individuals, the church, or a large context. It does not always refer to the future. The word is used far more to proclaim the word of God rather than to speak of the future. This gift is mentioned way more than any of the other spiritual gifts. Which doesn't make it greater. It's just, I just gathered many facts on each of the gifts. The gift of discernment. This is a way of having insight in determining the true nature of a situation, person, or thing. The gift of discernment is the ability to see the truth. People with a spiritual gift of discernment have, though wisdom and discernment can be bestowed to those who ask for it as well. I do encourage you to pray for wisdom and pray for discernment. I'm so sorry it's getting dark now. I swear it was light when I started this. Discernment is a tool God gives believers as they walk through life, though it must be understood, and the believer must follow the Lord's leading to be useful. It can allow someone to know whether a demonic or heavenly influence is over a person, place, or event. It is also a gift that can be requested, used, or ignored. The gift of discernment enables some to know with assurance whether certain behavior or teaching is from God, Satan, human error, or human power. It is one of the gifts of the Spirit given to the church for edification and ministry. It helps to distinguish between truth and error, good and evil, light and darkness. It also involves the ability to judge well the moral and practical consequences of our decisions. The gift of diverse tongues. Acts 2 explains to us that the new languages in which the believers were speaking were actual languages unknown to them, but known to others. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. The gift of diverse tongues is a way to commune more closely with God. 1 Corinthians 14 tells us that speaking in tongues is speaking directly to God. It is a language for prayer and can also be used in public setting. The last gift, interpretation of tongues. The gift of interpretation is a spiritual gift given by Holy Spirit to certain individuals to reveal messages spoken in the unknown tongues to God for the building up of the church. It is the special ability that gives that God gives to certain members to make known in an understood language the message of one who speaks in tongues. Tongues that are interpreted have the same effect of encouraging and blessing the church to love and serve God more deeply and effectively. For as, excuse me, through the gift of interpretation of tongues, the mysteries of the Spirit are translated to a language that will be understood by those in a congregation. The interpretation of tongues helps to bring orderliness in a congregation during the manifestation of tongues and prophecies. Again, a congregation is just a meeting of believers. The gift is not learned, it is imparted by the Holy Spirit. The gift of interpretation of tongues cannot be manifested by an unbeliever. The gift of interpretation of church helps the gift of tongues to be <laughs> gift of interpretation of church helps. I, I typed too fast there. Helps the gift of tongues to be beneficial. So the interpretation of tongues makes the tongues beneficial to the believers. So these are the gifts of the Spirit. Wow, I actually kept it under 30 minutes. And I'm sure we're going to be going into this much more, perhaps one by one. And I just want to close with 1 Corinthians 13, 1 and 2. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. The Lord be with you as you begin walking in these giftings. I love you, church.